When I was a kid, one of my very favorite films was Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. And so, in honor of Gene Wilder, I want to look at a question that I've always thought about since first seeing the film. How many fizzy lifting drinks would you need to float in order to drink? Strike that. Reverse it. Here is the scene in question. In it, Charlie and his grandpa take but a few sips of Wonka's experimental fizzy lifting drinks and then start floating towards the ceiling. But is there a way to make a soda that would lift you like that? Well, kinda. First, we have to decide what is in our soda. We need a real life gas that is lighter than air because if it is lighter than air, then it can lighten us. That's because of something called the buoyant force. The buoyant force in water or air is caused by something moving fluid out of the way. The fluid then responds with a force equal to the weight of that fluid displaced. For example, if this balloon is moving 10 grams worth of air out of the way but only weighs one gram, it is forced upwards. There's no earthly way of knowing how much gas that you'd be stowing. Wait, nope. Yes, there is. If Charlie downed fizzy lifting drinks, then his guts would act like a balloon as the gas bubbled out of the drink. And that gas would need to be light enough to buoy his maybe 50 kilograms. But is there a gas that could do that? The lightest gas in the universe would be Wonka's best bet. Hydrogen. Hydrogen is light enough that it can lift 30 kilograms per 30 meters cubed of the stuff. But you may already see a problem. If Charlie is 50 kilograms, that means he'd have to fit more than 30 cubic meters of hydrogen inside him just to get off the ground. <laughs> That's a lot of hydrogen. There's no knowing where we're going. The number of assumptions here are growing. The other problem is solubility. The reason why we use carbon dioxide in our soda is that it's very soluble in water, meaning that a lot of gas can dissolve into it. On the other hand, hydrogen only dissolves 0.00016 grams into every 100 grams of water. We then know that, ignoring exploding stomachs for a second, that it would take an enormous amount of soda to get Charlie off of the ground. And if fizzy lifting drinks come in maybe eight fluid ounce bottles, then we can calculate the number needed. Hint, it's a lot more than one. Yeah, it's a lot more than one. It's a number so big that I'm not even sure if Wonka's factory could even produce it. So here are our numbers. The mass of Charlie, 50 kilograms, the lifting capacity of hydrogen, the density of hydrogen, the density of water, because we need to get it to dissolve into water, and the volume of the fizzy lifting drink bottles. Knowing all these variables, we can plug it into a pretty simple equation and get the number of fizzy lifting drinks needed. So solve this giant equation, assuming that a fizzy lifting drink is eight ounces and the solubility of hydrogen gas in water and then has to all lift Charlie and it's 50 kilograms, then you get how many bottles you need, which is 10. And a half million fizzy lifting drinks just to lift Charlie's mass off the ground using the lightest gas in the universe. Yes, the science we are knowing is certainly not showing any signs that it is slowing. Yeah! Ten and a half million bottles is way, way more than we see in the movie, and obviously Charlie could never drink this many, and there's a good reason why we don't fill large floating things with explosive gas, or at least we're very careful when we do. Yeah. And no, I know what you're thinking, it would be even more bottles if you used helium. So to get the lift that we see in Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory, Charlie would have to down millions of fizzy lifting drinks. But in reality, we left out a giant caveat here. We've been assuming that the gas is only lifting Charlie's mass because of, you know, all the burping that he does. But it's actually lifting millions of pounds of water and glass that would be along with the soda, making fizzy lifting drinks kind of impossible. Otherwise, the drinks themselves would always be floating. So for right now, fizzy lifting drinks have to remain in a land of pure imagination until Willy Wonka comes up with an even lighter gas worthy of mass production in soda. So I'll keep an open mind until then. Ekniks you sauce That's 
because science backwards. Thank you so much for watching. I'd like to dedicate today's episode to Gene Wilder. What a wonderful and weird man. He made my childhood better and probably a lot of your childhoods better and funnier. So uh, this is for him. Also, if you were floating up towards the ceiling and you had a bunch of fizzy lifting drinks in your stomach, uh, if you did burp, you'd be ejecting mass upwards, which would force you downwards. That's how a rocket works. But in, in, in some of the edits of the movie and also the movie, they fart and that's the opposite. They're ejecting mass downwards, which would force them back upwards. Uh, so if you farted while having, while, while on fizzy lifting drinks, you would increase the chances that you'd die by fan. Wrong, sir. Wrong. Under section 37B of the contract signed by him, it quite clearly states that all offers shall become null and void if, and you can read for yourself in this photostatic copy, I, the undersigned, forfeit all rights, privileges, and licenses herein and herein contain, etc., etc., Fox Mendes incendium gloria cultum, etc., etc., Melobis puniter delicatum. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. You stole fizzy lifting drinks. You bumped at the ceiling, which now has to be washed and sterilized, so you get nothing. Nothing! You lose! Good day, sir! <laughs> that was it. I think that was it. Yeah.